It's taken seven years to get to this point and it's only got, well, a couple of weeks to live and mate and then that's the end of its life. They're just quite miraculous little critters. Here up the side of the house, uh, this is a juvenile redback spider that's setting up web here. It's a very, very faint uh, small web. I dare say the spider is living up here. And I'll just move some of this stuff away. This is actually part of the side of the house where we've had lots of redback activity. And I'm going to come up with some spider spray and um, nail the spider. Warning, this video would have reached very few of my subscribers because YouTube is totally busted. That's what I'm going to use, it's nice and cheap, it's got a redback spider on there. Coles Multi Insect Killer. Trick is give it a shake before you use it. And it's a big spray, it's a matter of getting down here and spraying up there and the spider should drop I hope. Here we go. Oh, okay, oh, I saw something drop all the way to the ground. It may have been the spider. Okay, I've just picked the spider up off the ground. Now I take a look at this. It's not looking like a redback spider. I can't really tell until I see it clearly on the computer screen when I put the video together. Maybe up the end of this video, we might have some clarification of what this little spiderling is. It's only a tiny thing. I put my finger in there next to it. Yes, uh, but the web for me was the main sign of what we were dealing with. Yes, it's peak spider season. It's definitely a good night sister to that poor little girl. Don't want them around. They must blow in by the wind because well, I walk past this part of the house every day and I only just saw the spider web setting up. And what I will do is I'll just basically spray out this whole area. Because I'm sure if there's one there, there'll be others trying it on as well. Actually, in all that spraying, I've now seen more web here. Look at this here. That's more redback spider web. It's the spray that's made me see that one. Oh, there's the spider there. It's affected by the spray. It's up there struggling for its life, so it's got a, a gob full of spray, and I dare say it's going to drop down. Yes, it's another redback spider. Very much an immature one, but uh, still a redback. This is right close to where we normally have our bins, and our bins are always like a, a festive home for these spiders, and the spider's down here now. It's in its last throes, it's copped enough spider spray to be heavily affected by it and we'll put it out of its misery and we can have like a double good night sister going on, can't we? Goodbye, good riddance. So there you go, uh, one was there, uh, one was there and it has me thinking where else are these spiders? I might have to really come in and uh, use a lot of chemical here. I'm not really a big fan of chemical but sometimes uh, sometimes you've got to use it because obviously I can't flamethrow a mummy's garden stuff, can I? I can't see any more spiders running for its life. This can of spray is almost empty. <coughs> I'm trying not to breathe it in because it's quite choking. There it is, it's empty now. So there's the can. It's got a, a mature female redback spider on it. Coles, multi, insect killer. It's nice and inexpensive. It's actually quite good. Uh, I'm not a fan of chemical control, but sometimes you need to use it. And the date of today's discovery, there it is there, the 3rd of November, right at the start of when the spider season gets gnarly. These spiders, man, they will just pick up on the next best place to live nice and warm here, nice recluse areas to hide in there, you need to understand that. And the place where they used to like to live before was my bins. That's nice and warm there, recluse areas, but the white lithium grease has stopped them from living there. The really good thing I know about lithium grease versus, let's say, Vaseline is in a really hot environment like this, and the plastic's really hot, it's not melting and drooping down the bins here. It's staying put and staying where I sprayed it. While I'm here, I just remembered I did a video. It was back in our winter time, remembering our seasons are flip-flop reversed to everyone else. And I'm sure I found a redback spider set up inside one of these tools here. I think it was inside here. Sneaky little things, aren't they? Just had a bit of a, a look around in other places where the redbacks love to live. Uh, they love this piece of metal here, but there's nothing in there yet. But I'm seeing the redback activity underneath this old barbecue, and I can also see their web activity here. I've got another spider spray here. It's not my favourite one. And we'll see what comes running out of here. It's a eucalyptus sort of scented one. That, um, it's actually a surface spray. And because the web's going in all directions, uh, the spider could be anywhere. It even could be up there. Crikey, he says uh, a lot of activity I can tell you. A lot of like tall spidling activity. It's not nice. There's a spider there. It's dropping down. Okay, yep, it's going down. Uh, there's a next to the Dyson there. I think it's dusted. Good night, little sister. Here's the last bit of spray for you. Well, I suppose I can expect this because, well, it's that time of year. 
And this is an old rustic barbecue, like way back in the 1960s, made in Australia stuff. You don't find that anymore. Underneath here, all the hallmarks of red black spider. It's only a little immature one, so we're going to come in and we're going to spray and also spray up underneath here as well. Anything could drop, I tell you, anything. I noticed a comment on that previous Redback Spider video and someone was saying they had a Redback Spider problem but they couldn't use a flamethrower. Well look, sometimes chemical is a great solution but the thing there is then you're bound by you know, chemical all the time. Now, I bet you my Dyson collection here has got a stack of spider activity. I think the trick to using chemical is understanding the spider's breeding patterns and know when to come in and spray. Or else, uh, let's say if you leave it too late, uh, you'll be using way, way more chemical than what you really need to. In fact, whoa, I see a crazy spider hanging there. I'll just come in and grab this one on the web and we'll take a look at this spider. Hmm, curious. So who knows their spider identification? It actually looks a little bit like that mystery spider that I um, grabbed near the Thomas Toys in that previous spider video. Some type of widowy type thing stripy leg thing the same sort of shape and webs just like a redback spider hey yes um that's another one of those spiders i dare say well i've got it like this i'll just carefully turn it over so we can take a look underneath this spider there's the underneath that spider is that going to help you identify that spider it's basically well gray cement colored on cement Sorry about that, I've got nothing else around at the moment to show that spider, but um, maybe the spider experts can ID that one for me. That's a mystery one. Just like a redback's web, you know, I'd say yes, that's where redback's living, but I don't believe that's a redback spider. And maybe the final thing I'll talk about is the problem I've got with the spider tank. Uh, because we've had really hot days, uh, this is where it's set up. It's set up in an area where there's always shade, mind you. There is sun. It gets quite warm here for the fact sun hits this part here and I'll just take this off. It's got a plastic lid on top which lets air into the top of the spider tank but we've got some major major problems with the Vaseline. I'll take this into the bench where there's nice lighting so we can see what's going on. Okay I'm on my workbench here I can start to see things a lot clearer here and I've got a massive mess on my hands here. Uh, the Vaseline is all drooped down in fact some of it's run uh, almost all the way to the bottom of the spider tank here. I never had this problem on the uh, other spider tank where I applied Vaseline to the top. Uh, I think I know what's happened is I've actually, well, I used a different Vaseline. I used a no-name one on that first spider tank from the spider tank study and on this one here, this is what I used. I actually used the brand name one, Vaseline, pet white petroleum jelly. Maybe I should have used the no-name one. There's condensation in there as well because the spider tank has got moisture in the soil. And you can see here, again, it's just drooping all the way down. Uh, it's a real mess. And I'm just trying to think, how am I going to fix this and or make this so we're not peering through, you know, drops of Vaseline to try and see spiders. One part of me is thinking of this solution, it may be the easiest thing to do, is basically go out and buy another tank. I think I can take the lid off safely here. Those spiderlings are in there, probably eaten by the other redbacks. Ooh, actually it smells like a compost heap. Some people ask me, what does it smell like? Well, at the moment it smells just like a compost heap. A bit of, um, like, freshly cut lawn as well. Strange smell. Yeah, anyway, to get back to what I was saying, come along, basically pick up the centerpiece, lift it out and put it into another tank. And in that way, I'm hoping all the spiders that are on there can basically traverse across and live in a new tank because uh, the thought of coming in and cleaning this and getting rid of all this Vaseline, I'm thinking of using a razor blade and basically scraping it up um, and then using, I don't know, some very mild chemical to clean the glass because what I'm worried about is I don't want to put too much chemical in there because it's going to start affecting the wonderful uh, female redback spiders I've got living in there. I'm not sure if you can hear, there's actually a blowfly in here because the smell of the tank's attracting things to want to go in there and die, don't they? If they go in there, it's going to be good nice. Just a blowfly. Maybe a nice, uh, more mild thing is baby wipes. Uh, would be the very easy thing to come in and, you know, get, basically get rid of the bulk of this Vaseline first and then uh, try and refine it and get the rest of it out. I'm sure I used uh, a Vaseline that was in a round jar, it was a no-name Vaseline and for some reason this Vaseline that I've used this time around is melting and you know I said earlier on why do I like lithium grease? It's got a high melting point. 
doesn't go droopy uh, like this Vaseline does. Massive mess to clean this up. I'm actually having flashbacks to when I used to clean the other spider tank. That's basically a tongue depressor and some nappy wipes there. And if you put that like that, then at least you've got some sort of tool and you're not putting your hand like right down uh, with the spider roonies. Mind you, I think they'd be more scared of you than you are of them, I'm hoping. And yeah, maybe I will come along and clean this, but just be very careful. You're always checking things. Whenever you bring stuff out of the spider tank, you're looking for spiders. In case you, you picked up a hitchhiker along the way. I've noticed these girls love a bit of a hitchhike. And the big difference between the redback spider being a hitchhiker is, well, it's the hitchhiker that's going to kill you. It's not the driver of the car when it's a redback. And the other little cleaning trick that I had was my long tweezers with the nappy wipes. And it was funny, when I did the spider tank study, I never really detailed the amount of maintenance that went on when I was looking at those spiders because I needed to be as optically clear through the glass as possible. Yes, I might be able to save this actually, uh, because really, once you start to get grubby glass, your image starts to uh, degradate a lot. And I've got to get this done before the bulk of the spiderlings hatch. Uh, from this tank. I know a couple of spiderlings have already come out. They do come out in small numbers at first and then there's an apocalypse And if I get this done fast enough, well, maybe I'll save this tank and always make sure you're checking that swab Then make sure there's no killer hitchhikers on there Maybe if I come along and I carefully apply via an applicator some white lithium grease And that's what I put on the top of this a spider tank. You know this stuff's wonderful You don't get it uh, going crazy in the heat as I found of the Vaseline, very, very boring to have that happen and it's just given me a little bit of extra work that uh, I'd prefer not to do. That little mystery spider is in there. I'll notice a black beetle near it as well. I can't see the spiderlings. I dare say uh, they would just be a yummy meal for the redbacks that are living in there. I can even see some of the Vaseline's made it all the way down to the soil. That is very depressing. Well, I'm learning in a very cruel way, well, even though these products say they're both petroleum jelly, well, they actually play out in very different ways. I wished I used this product here because I think I needed to use that. That was a product there that I used. It's perfect for nappy rash and whatnot else, but when I touch it here, it actually feels like it's breaking down. It's, see how it's glistening on my finger there? Just remember that look of the glistening on my finger. Okay, and I've got a little thing off the side here that I'm wiping my finger with, okay. That's that Vaseline white petroleum jelly. If I go over to a professional product, that's what model makers use for releasing moulds. Paraffin Soft White BP 100% petroleum jelly. Now, when I put my finger into this one, it has got a totally different feel. That feels stiff. I'm trying to think of words. See the way it's coming off my finger there? It's not coming up wet. So little did I know that there's these different melting temperatures to a product like that versus a product like that that we all know and love if i do it again well obviously i won't be using this product here uh, maybe i'll use this or maybe i'll just use something else like white lithium grease because i know you don't get the droopies but maybe what i'll do next time if i ever use a petroleum product is i'll go and test it on the glass first like i'll go and put a smudge on glass take it out in the sun and see if it starts drooping on a mediocre warm day I know I've got some smart people in my audience, but I'll tell you what, I learned my lesson the hard way. I just hope you have learned a lesson from my mistake here. Maybe you know more about these products than I do. If you do so, please let me know. So I've got myself a spider mystery. I seem to be getting spiders that seem to be different to redback spiders. So I've asked the audience in the previous video when I found that strange grey spider that looked like a redback spider, what is this spider? Some people are saying it's a brown widow. It has a widowy type look, and I'll show the comments that I've been seeing landing. Mind you, there's not many comments because YouTube is dysfunctional. Other people saying it's a grey house spider. Yes, and that had me looking at, you know, Google searches and other web pages, and I found this website, Find a Spider. And in relation to the grey house spider, it says, While this species may establish in garden shrubs, it has a fondness for undersides of outdoor furniture and other open containers. Its general shape resembles that of a redback spider, but its colour scheme is very different. Yes, that's sounding very much like a grey house spider is what I have in the spider tank. Just thinking back to those spiderlings that I got with the spider spray at the start of the video, with spiderlings it's really hard to tell what they are because they haven't got their colourings and markings. Little redback spiders can look like other spiders and other spiders can look like little redback spiders when they're young. Maybe because I've been so ruthless and thorough in removing the redback spiders from around the backyard and places where they live and making it very difficult for them to come back there, 
This has allowed other spiders to come in and take the place where the redback spiders used to live. I've always viewed the redback spiders as being fairly high up the pecking order of the more dangerous things in the backyard. In a sense, the things that take out other things, possibly the one above it, are the ants. But I always saw the redback spiders didn't really have that many other things in the backyard that could really take them out. Maybe the redback spider's strongest card is their ability to adapt and live in an urban environment which is nothing like their natural environment. They've really been able to make our homes into their home and they have adapted to all sorts of things that make them very comfortable to breed in great numbers. And my backyard was a pure example of how these miraculous spiders can adapt. Mind you, I have yet to see a redback spider adapt to a flamethrower. And that's what I use because it's chemical free and it takes out the spiders really, really fast. I've just been out the back uh, looking for beetles. Fluffy's obviously off to see something she's interested in. And uh, I'll tell you what, I got a nice surprise. It's that time of year and it was also a comment on my YouTube channel. Leo, have you seen any cicadas yet? Well, we're about to see some cicada glory. I'll let the grass grow up nice and long. Uh, this is the area not far from where the redback spiders hang out around the toys. And what I found was there was a hole here. And just along from the hole, there is a cicada that's just emerged. Let me just remove some grass so I can tell a bit more of a story here. Now just imagine if I'd not removed the redback spider from underneath Mrs. Cow, and look where that cicada is. Uh, there's a good chance that cicada would have progressed through here, and the redback spider that was there back in August, well, Mrs. Cicada might have been the next meal. It's a very active part of the garden. There are ant lions uh, working all around here because there's also ants. And the cicada here has got a bit of a trip to do to find a tree. And I might just come in and very carefully take a look at this cicada. I'm going to actually put it somewhere. Yeah, they're quite miraculous um, when they've just come out from underground. It's nice and moist. Wow, we've had the right weather for these guys to emerge, I can tell you. Wow, it's actually quite lively as well. It's taken seven years to get to this point and it's only got, well, a couple of weeks to live and mate and then that's the end of its life. They're just quite miraculous little critters. I still can't get out of my head the fate that cicada would have had. Let's say if the redback spider was still operating in this area here. It would have been good night sister, little cicada. And what I will do is I'll come along and I will take the cicada to a tree and give it a very good fighting chance so it can emerge in the early morning and live out its uh, last couple of weeks of life as these little critters do. It's going to probably think I'm the tree here at the moment and I'm just going to stand up nice and gently here and find a tree and that's a very dangerous phase that they go through between going from the hole because they're sort of safe underground for all those many years they spend under there and then all of a sudden they're up against the real world in a sense and I think this tree here will be a nice little starting spot, pointing in the right direction of course, for that cicada to uh, become a full-blown adult. Well the good news is uh, Mr and Mrs Cicada is on his or her way and we'll just let the magic happen all by itself, eh?